So hey there fellow YouTubers, Frank Bush here again. In today's video I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, solar cooker technology. And specifically I want to talk about uh, evacuated tube solar cooking. You know, I've been doing solar cooking on and off for about 20 years now. And uh, generally speaking I've built out multiple different versions and models and I've tried some different commercially available products over the years as well. And uh, I find evacuated tube solar technology tends to be the easiest to use and the best performer overall in ratio to the size of it. So uh, I'm going to walk through some of the different options that I have here that's available and kind of talk about some of the uh, pluses and minuses to using this type of uh, solar technology and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that type of content, you know, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm just out in my backyard. You might hear a bit of noise from the traffic and the environment, but you know, such is life, right? But uh, either way, what I have here is a few different models of uh, solar cookers that um, I use when I'm out in the field. And uh, I'm going from really kind of small, really, you know, tiny little solar cookers that you could uh, backpack, if you will, with, up to larger versions where you could take camping with you and those types of things. And uh, right up to uh, the scale of being able to cook for, uh, you know, a family of four to six people kind of thing. So in this pot here, I've got it filled with water and I've got a, a one cup measuring spoon that's in there. What I'm going to do is kind of switch down to the close-ups of each one of these different models and discuss kind of key points to them and I'll fill them up with water and uh, use those to kind of show you the performance as we move through this video. And uh, generally speaking, I'm using water because it's got the highest level of BTU requirements to come up to temperature. So generally speaking, uh, it's a worst case scenario, if you will, of um, filling these um, different solar cookers up with water and showing you how long it takes for that water to kind of come up to temperature is really worst case. So uh, let me shift camera angles and like I say, I'll kind of walk from one to the next and kind of walk through them of the different features and uh, aspects of them. And uh, we'll start to move through this video, yeah? Okay, so the first evacuated tube solar cooker I want to show you is made by a company called North American Solar Solutions. I really like the case quality that they supply their product in. You know, having this aluminum case is really kind of sturdy and it's got the protective foam on the inside and all these types of things, which makes it really good in the way it's packaged. You don't have to worry about breaking it when you're out in the field as much. And as you can see, it's a fairly small unit though. So I'm just going to pop off the silicone seal on the top and then like I was saying earlier, I've got this kind of bowl with some water in it. So I'm just going to pour in one cup of water because that's about the capacity in which this thing holds so it definitely doesn't hold a huge volume of water which is one of the kind of the limiting factors to this but i do like its protective case and i like the small design so this is really kind of an ideal thing um, if you were um, out camping and you just wanted to have this thrown into your vehicle and that type of thing or you know sitting in your backpack and you know even though it is a little bit voluminous i'm just going to uh, slide this here a bit and what I've done is I've turned around and added on some aluminum foil. It didn't come with this, but I added on some aluminum foil to the protective foam inline just to help give some increase to um, the sun's reflection going on the, the back side of the evacuated tube. In essence, it just helps speed it up a bit. But uh, needless to say, this one's really simple. Like I say, it does off, you know, a small coffee's worth of water for you. And uh, it's really a simple unit. You literally just fill it and set it. So right now I'll just check my clock here, tell you what time it is. So it's 10 after 11 a.m. So generally speaking, I'm gonna walk through each one of these. I'm gonna fill them each up with water and set them up. And then I'll come back after a period of time and kind of show you the performance of them as we go. You know, like I say, this one is probably one of the cheapest ones you can get. I think this was about $20, $25. That's Canadian dollars because I'm up in Canada. But uh, about $20, $25, so relatively cheap product. I did like the quality of the casing. You know, I don't feel worried about just tossing it in the back of my truck and having it out in the field with me and those types of things. But it is limiting in just the fact of how small of a volume it makes but when it comes to these evacuated tubes one of the things that makes them you know really in my perspective hyper efficient is the fact that they have um, a vacuum that sits in between two layers of glass with a black copper surface that kind of sits to the inside here so as the sunlight shines through it gets converted into heat and that heat gets trapped to the inside of the container you know no other solar cooker really does that 
and the efficiency of that like even though even though it might get up to a boil on the inside I can turn around and touch the outside I'm not gonna burn myself it's really safe in that regard the only chance that you're gonna have of hurting yourself in any way is if you touch the metal that's on the inside surface of this tube then you know once it's come up to temperature but other than that these things are really safe to handle and the fact that it doesn't let any heat heat that's been created escape it makes it really ideal to kind of trap the heat in as fast as possible to bring this up to temperature because that's really what you're trying to achieve when you're solar cooking you know weather can change and you know you can have clouds roll in and those types of things so the faster these things can come up to temperature and the longer they can retain the heat so if there is intermittent cloud it's not just going to drop back down to a cold temperature again and then have to come back up again evacuated tubes are really ideal in that regard for the uh, efficiency of which they trap the heat in yeah so i'll move on to the next model which is uh slightly bigger holds a little bit more costs a bit more but it has uh, some more advanced features to it and i'll kind of walk through those yeah so the next one in my list i'll just make the uh, go sun go so this is the company go sun they produce this product i find this really an ideal thing if i want to take it backpacking with me you know generally speaking for its size and its weight it weighs about two pounds to give you an idea and this other one weighed about a pound and a half two pounds as well because of the aluminum case that it came in but uh there isn't really a lot of companies that produce evacuated tubes so you're kind of limited to what is commercially available you know it's one of those things where it's just restrictions within the market but uh, i'm just going to pull out a couple of the components that come with it it's got uh, a tube cleaner scrub brush that comes with it which i find handy and it also comes with these little silicone cups that you can put food in but generally speaking I find because of the small size of this cooker, I don't tend to use these little silicone trays at all. They just take up more room than I'd want them to in the, uh, in the cooker itself. But uh, I'll just fully unwrap this. Bit of uh, dirt on the mirrors. I've obviously cleaned it with some murky water when I was out last time. But uh, this is kind of flexible in the regard of I can put food in here now. There's a tray. I'll just kind of show you that there's a tray here where I can put food in so it's enough to cook a couple ounces of food it can make a small meal for an individual when they're out in the field and I've showed this in previous videos I do believe where you know within reason it, it, I mean it's really a highly efficient thing but uh, within reason it's kind of limited just because of the volume of food it can cook and uh, what I'm gonna do though is it's also versatile in the way it's um, shaped so there's this little component on the back that I can kind of pull out here and it comes with this little stand clip and generally speaking what this allows me to do now is to turn around and clip that on as such but I can now stand the solar cooker up so that I can hold water as well so this can you know cook food and and deal with um, boiling water off so I'm just gonna put some water in this because generally speaking it's not good to have solar cookers um, sitting empty in the Sun you don't want to temperature shock the glass there is no real preheating of these if you will you don't want to uh, temperature shock the glass so you want to kind of put your food in right at the beginning when you're first getting going there is no preheating you set it in and kind of forget it if you will so i'm just going to take that like i say the tray and it's got the silicone top on it to kind of keep the heat in oh and i lost a bit of water there but it wasn't too bad and uh, it's really just that simple. Like I said, last time I was camping, I was in some murky water environment and the rag I used, I think, kind of was a little less than desirable for the water that I used to clean. So I might have to go and grab a rag and wipe that down just to make it perform better. But one of the key things I wanted to kind of mention here, and let me take a peek at the camera and see if we're getting a good angle on that or not. Hold on. Is, you know, I'll kind of shift my camera a bit. So, Hopefully the camera's given that justice, but there, you know what? I'm gonna shift camera angles. I'll give this a wipe down and then I'll kind of discuss some of the key points moving forward on this unit, yeah? yeah sorry about that. That's had to give the uh, mirrors a little wipe down. That's what happens when you're lazy and tired out in the field and don't clean it properly the last time I used it. <laughs> Such is life. But needless to say, you hopefully can see that on these mirrors that exist on both sides here, it's almost pure black that we're seeing on these surfaces. Because of the arc of the uh, mirror, it's really creating a parabolic shape that's helping get a lot of extra light onto this evacuated tube. So generally speaking, I find 
this um, Go Sun Go uh, to be a really efficient thing. Like I say, it holds about two cups of water, so it's ideal for if you're doing freeze-dried meals and those types of things, and you're just wanting to boil off enough water to make that. And uh, generally speaking, the performance is really high. So, like I say, I know I just put this on uh, you know, three or four minutes ago, so we'll call it 11.15 that I put that on, so hopefully I'll show that on the camera to make sure that, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's 11.18 officially, but, you know, it started about three minutes ago. But that's this unit. of It's kind of good in the regards of that I can tilt it up and be able to boil off some water in it with ease, and that I can also flip it and have it kind of horizontal and be able to cook food. But one of the restrictions of this, yet once again, is the fact of it only holds about two cups of uh, fluids. So, you know, if you're wanting to use this, you're either cooking a meal you know, that's going to be a relatively small meal or you're cooking off uh, enough water to make yourself a cup of coffee or that type of thing, you know, but uh, doing both at the same time, you know, is obviously not going to happen. So you end up having to spend extra time using this unit. And that kind of brings me to the next step, which will be um, working with this kettle. So generally speaking, I've used this kettle and the go sun go in combination with each other in the past when i've been out in the field where i've used this to primarily cook the food and then i've used this to primarily boil my water but uh, like i said i'll just kind of let these sit out now and uh, i'll switch over to the kettle and kind of walk through some of the details of that yeah this is a, a solar kettle i've shown this in a couple different videos but i haven't really talked about it in great detail in the past i don't think but either way here we are today so needless to say this has a very similar kind of construct yeah, there's a bus going by sorry guys but uh where it's got mirrors that reflect just the same as the uh, go sun go does and i'm just gonna pop some water in that as well and this holds slightly more water than the go sun go so this holds a full two cups to the brim whereas the go sun go only holds just under two cups for full capacity in fact i can even add just a little bit more water to this before i kind of hit the threshold and generally speaking what i find is i'm just going to put my lid back on bear with me generally speaking what i find is when you're looking at the uh the black on these evacuated tubes so i'll just kind of sorry i know i kind of tangent when i'm talking but needless to say there's a stand that's kind of built right into this unit so when it comes it comes all kind of you know, closing together and all that happiness you simply pop up the stand pop up the sides there's little slots that exist here the stand bars kind of nest into those slots and then once you've kind of set them then you can angle it and just put it into the sun and it's the same kind of uh, idea that exists with this go sun go where it's got the mirrors reflecting the extra light onto the back but generally speaking what i find with this unit is that um the mirrors the way that they design the cutouts the mirrors aren't really as ideally angled as they could be now, in order to get the black on the entire mirror reflecting the back side of these evacuated tubes i find you got to kind of nestle these uh, mirrors forward a little bit to help optimize it and the angle i find sits a little lower so if you're down in um, latitudes that are closer to you know 30 degrees and that kind of thing this is a good option because it's really optimized for that angle whereas the go sign go is more on a 45 degree angle so it's really more ideally suited for um, the northern united states and southern canada and those types of things the performance I find, generally speaking, of the Go Sun Go is far greater than this um, uh, Sun Kettle. I believe it's uh, Patriots that puts this out, if I remember correctly. But uh, the Sun Kettle, because it has the smaller mirrors, doesn't perform quite as well. And uh, I kind of had commented before of about the levels to fill them. So you'll see the black surface on these evacuated tubes and on the top there's a small area where there is no black surface covering. Generally speaking you don't want to fill the water up past that. You want to give yourself a little bit of breathing room and all the evacuated tubes have that where there's kind of a little inch inch and a half space on the top where there is no black coating that's covering anything and uh, you don't really want to kind of fill things beyond that point. Yeah, but 
this combination right here, I find generally speaking, this will give me a hot coffee and this can cook off a meal, if you will, um, without using any electricity or anything else. And I find them to be fairly efficient. If, let me check my time again. The, it's now 11.25 a.m. And I opened that up, what, two or three minutes ago. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll just call it 11.20. You know, within reason, we'll come back in about an hour from now and I'll kind of show you, I've got a temperature gauge in the house, and I'll kind of show you the temperatures that are being reached across these different units. We're on a nice sunny day today to kind of show you the uh, performance expectations as you move through time, yeah? Then generally speaking, I find that even if you're in kind of inclemental weather where the clouds are rolling in and stuff, evacuated tubes are really good at kind of keeping the heat in if the clouds roll in for five minutes your food's not just going to turn ice cold or you know you're not just going to rapidly drop in temperature these evacuated tubes even after the sun goes down and it's no longer shining on them they're so efficient at trapping the heat in you can come back a couple hours later and that water inside these tubes is still going to be super hot like, you know, it might not obviously be to a boil because the energy needs to keep going in to maintain that, if you will. But it'll definitely be hot enough where you can make yourself a hot drink, you know, an hour, two, three hours after the sun is completely gone. But uh, if I'm kind of doing, you know, mid-level um, bushcraft camping where I want to set up a base camp and, and be there for a week or so and I know the weather's going to be half decent, I could use this to do a lot of the primary cooking as I move through that week without having to rely on any type of wood or electricity or any of that business yet. But uh, I'll now shift up to kind of the larger units because, you know, if you're going off grid for an extended period of time, these things are great to kind of get you through a couple of days. But generally speaking, you're going to want to shift up to kind of more rugged, uh, larger volumes, uh, you know, and, and be able to kind of deal with it in inclemental weather even more so you know it's it's the evolutionary aspect of off-grid stuff you know if you're setting up an off-grid cabin and you've put in some electricity in that I'm gonna in one of the next options I talk about here um, I'm gonna start talking about hybriding in your electricity to use in combination with the solar but uh, like I thought say I know I kind of ramble in my videos I'll stop here at this point in time these are all going I'll shift up to the next one and we'll kind of uh, keep going in the uh, video yeah so I guess one of the other things I'll mention too is how small the footprint is of these different models that you need to actually do some solar cooking. To give you an idea, hopefully the camera's got this in, in view, but I've got my 200 watt solar panel here. So if you're used to solar panels and the sizes of them and those types of things, you know, it's a couple feet by a couple feet. It's not really a huge space, right? And I've got three solar cookers that easily sit in a smaller footprint than that one single 200 watt solar panel yeah <coughs> and like i said i don't know if the camera is catching this on angle i've got a little uh, uh improv drip line mechanism that i've got here i'll show that on future videos hold on i was meaning to do uh let me see if the camera is even catching that here let me i know i'm kind of sidetracking but i'll talk a little bit in detail about my little homemade drip lines for um watering the plants automatically if you're you know gone away from the uh, plants for extended periods of time and you want to allow water to kind of feed into them and stuff without it having it cost an arm and a leg but needless to say i'll save that for a separate video i'll do a little simple how-to on that probably in the next couple days if i get the time but uh i'll shift gears here switch camera angles and start talking about the next unit yeah all right i just brought out a milk crate to help in this example but you know you could use whatever object as a backdrop if you will but uh, in essence, this is just a basic solar evacuated tube that's a far larger size, as you can see. This thing's fairly substantial. And I wanted to kind of stop at this point in time and just kind of comment about, you know, these um, solar tubes and some of their potential fragility. So generally speaking, these are fairly solid when it comes to the main body of things. Where the real sensitive point is on the end here Hopefully the camera's picking that up. I'll try to give it a good angle. But there's kind of a metal tip, if you will, that sits on the end. That's gonna be the most fragile part of the solar cookers, you know? So when it comes to, um, when it comes to wanting to protect things, this is definitely the most um, vulnerable area. And you wanna protect this zone as much as possible. But if you don't want all the clunky gear and you just want as large of evacuated tube as possible, you could use this as an option. So what I'll do is, I'll just quickly pull out the tray on the inside. I'm just going to cover this for a second because, like I said earlier, you don't want to let these be exposed 
to um, the sun for any length of time without any food in them. They'll get really hot really, really fast. And you don't want to shock the glass when you go to slide your food in. If it's ice cold and the inside temperature of that thing is a couple hundred degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to quickly put in a couple of cups of water here and I'm not going to fill this up all the way, but I'm just going to kind of show you an example, but I'm going to put four full cups of water into this to show you that, you know, here's a liter of water. So hopefully the camera's getting this on decent angles, but there's a liter of water. I still got plenty of room in here. This thing has a capacity of about three liters volume to give you an idea. And uh, like I say, I'm just using smaller amounts because there's no sense in me boiling off you know, liters and liters of water for this example specifically. But generally speaking, I'm gonna wanna just slide this tray into this tube. And that can have, you know, whatever type of food you wanted to have in there. And these these can get up to about 500 degree Fahrenheit or so. So they get super hot. And uh, like I say, just kind of close the lid on it. And the reason why I had this, you know, this is really just a car windshield screen, if you will, to show you that this stuff can be done kind of really low budget, even if you own just a basic, you know, uh, evacuated tube. Of I'm simply just going to turn around and take this and put it down. And... Uh, Potentially I'll have to weigh this down if it gets breezy But all I'm doing is really creating a little nested mirror area to help get light onto the back of it You know nothing fancy and when it's portable this foam um, Foam mylar will just help protect the glass if I'm moving it around so generally speaking I'm gonna want to just kind of aim that so that it's straight facing the Sun And right now it's a little early in the day, so you just set that a little bit on an angle and the good part about these evacuated tubes though is there isn't a massive amount of maintenance when it comes to having to shift these into the sun as you move through time. Of I can now let that sit for a good you know, hour or two, which is normally enough time to be able to do the job to get the cooking done and that type of thing within this type of setup. But uh, as you can see, really elementary, really simple put a little log if I was out off grid behind it just to kind of prop it up or prop it up with a couple sticks there's a thousand and one ways to kind of set the mylar but you know with this next model I'm gonna show it's got the reflectors built into it but if you wanted to stick to a you know a shoestring budget this model cost hundreds of dollars over here this evacuated tube was only about a hundred hundred fifty dollars I managed to get a fairly good deal on it so you know if you're willing to sacrifice having the built-in mirrors you can save yourself a ton of money and still get the better part of the functionality you would out of one of these more advanced uh, models if you will but um, generally speaking even without this mylar this evacuated tube will do the job all on its own it just takes longer so by using you know reflectors it just helps add more light to the situation and helps accelerate the process but these on their own will bring the water to a boil. It's just instead of taking three or four hours to do it, you only want it to be in an hour or so, right? So I'll kind of shift camera angles and show you, you know, a slightly different angle. And then I'll move on to uh, the next model up, which is really kind of the most advanced model that I own. And one of the most advanced models that I know that exist, really. Now, there's a couple other models that are out there that are better performers than this. But... Um, I just don't have one and they're super expensive at this point in time but uh yeah let me just shift camera angles to give you kind of a more close-up in this regard yeah so and then like i say i'm just kind of shift angles here but like i say this is a three liter volume capacity and really like i say it's quite efficient when it comes to the speed at which it'll work you know and just having these additional mylar reflectors um definitely helps amp the speed in which things are kind of heated up if you will and I'll just kind of pop it open to show you of with one liter of water there's still tons of room in there it's still got massive amounts and I can already feel that water starting to get you know it's not cold anymore it's starting to heat up fairly quickly and I don't even want to touch the inside really because it gets so hot yeah it's already enough to want to burn the tips of my fingers and that's one of the things you got to kind of be mindful of of 
you don't want to touch the inside once these things get going. They're, they are definitely enough to scald you. Uh, they can easily get up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, roughly 250, 260 degrees Celsius. It's well above a boil. So you can easily burn yourself by touching the inside. But as you can see, touching the outside, no problems. You know, it's room temperature. There's no risk of a kid, you know, touching it and burning themselves and stuff. They'd have to literally come and open this and, and physically get into the insides of it before they're gonna hurt themselves. So I kind of like that aspect of things as well. And uh, I, on this unit, I'll stop again and show a different angle. On this unit, I've got a little 12 volt plug. And in fact, I've got the same on the next model up that I plan on showing. This is really just a spare tube that I bought. And when I saw that the level of discount on buying this tube was so much more uh, you know, so much cheaper than it was buying the full unit. Um, I kind of like the idea of this improv setup as well because it gives me the potential to cook off enough for eight to 10 people with the combination of my two large solar cookers um, without having to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on it, if you will. But uh, like I say, this has 12 volt capacity where I can plug it into a cigarette lighter and I'll just kind of pull this one out and show you on there because it's the same tray unit that's sitting in here, is here, where it's got a 12 volt based um, electric heater unit that sits on the underside, and the same exists on this tray here. And it sits on the underside, and it allows me to uh, amp up the speed in which these things cook by um, supplying it you know, cigarette lighter 12 volt capability. So in this model, just having this plug-in ability allows me to really amp this up of right now this thing can probably take about an hour and a half two hours to bring the water that's you know two liters of water say that would be sitting in here up to a full boil by plugging in electricity and having it sit in the sun at the same time I find I can cut my time down to about half I did a previous video on hybriding in electrical and solar thermal at the same time and uh it's in one of my previous videos that I put out. So if you're interested in kind of seeing that in far more detail, um, there's a video up on my channel where I kind of go through that and show the performance. I think I boiled off two liters of water in one hour's time on that video, if I remember correctly. That was a little while ago, but either way, I'll shift up to my Go Sun Fusion, which is really the best unit I have. Now, just to save a bit of time, I've already put some water into this tray. Let like me say I put about four, four and a half cups or so into this tray. Roughly about the same as what I had in here before. Now, this is the Go Sun Fusion unit, where I've shown short clips about this in previous videos, but, and like I said, I've talked in detail about using this in combination with um, solar electric to really get high performance solar cooking. So if you're interested in kind of how to max this type of technology out so that it performs as, you know, rapidly as possible you definitely might want to go back and check out one of my previous videos in that regard but uh needless to say i just got to put the legs up if you will and uh this unit just opens up as such so it's really elementary you pop these little metal bars so that everything kind of stays straight tilt it to the sun so you now it's on a half decent angle there's a little spot on there that tells you exactly what the uh, solar angle is that you should be trying to achieve and you just want to kind of optimize it where the shadow of a little red dot here I'll zoom in and show a close-up of this but there's a red dot that sits on the top of the glass and you want it to be centered inside the bubble like I say I'll, I'll show that in, in a full detail in a moment I just can't let these sit as I keep saying of one of the biggest risks to these units is if you let them preheat empty and then you want to put something into them. It's, it's really a big no-no with this level of technology. But um, that's really it now. It's just that simple of these have the capacity, like I say, to cook for anywhere from four to six people. It'll cook, you know, a good three liters of, of food in these things. So it's really good for if you're having to support a family and you're off grid in a scenario like that, you know, these types of things can become invaluable. Given the fact that I have two of them, I could easily be uh, boiling off uh, water enough for multiple people and cooking a meal for a family all at the same time using this technology, you know, with ease. And if I wanted to increase the performance or I wanted to cook with this unit because it is so efficient with these evacuated tubes, I don't even have to have this opened. I can literally just plug this into my solar electric, which runs on 12 volts, and this consumes about 130 watts worth of power 
and it'll still cook food. So it's really good in both scenarios where if the sun is available and you want to just run off that without using any electricity, you can. And if the sun's not available and you still have the need to cook food, but you're running a solar electric as well because you're in some sort of off-grid cabin environment and those types of things, this type of technology can be absolutely invaluable to you to have that level of flexibility. There is no other solar cooker that I'm aware of on the market that offers this kind of hybrid component, you know, of... I was debating on whether I was going to build out some electric components to modify some of my other ones to incorporate some additional solar into them as well. As well. I was still kind of pondering that in the back of my head and uh, potentially that might be in future videos but either way this to me is the cat's meow really when it comes to um, best performer. And, you know, Go, Go Sun does make uh, an even larger unit that has really an ideal perfect parabolic dish shape to it they only just released it a little while ago but it was already sold out in no time and it's super expensive we're talking you know the units close to a thousand dollars I'm not ready to commit to that level you know for something that already performs almost the same um, when I could turn around and get an evacuated tube for a hundred hundred and fifty bucks use a bit of mylar and achieve similar results I decided to go with volume and redundancy of my systems um, over the highly optimized because I believe that this unit is already uh, so efficient in that regard and, um, it does the job really well you know but uh, I'll kind of stop and show the little details of how this focuses so that you can know that you're getting good alignment and, and uh, uh, kind of show you know the insides and the 12 volts capacity and those types of things potentially I'll just go grab my batteryless um, solar setup I've got the solar panel sitting right here so I could just um, grab one of my little porty setups that I have plug into the solar panel and show how I combine these to amp up the uh, the um, cooking speeds you know almost double them if you will and uh, that's with really simple electronics which I've shown in previous videos as well so if you haven't seen previous videos where I've done of the simple cigarette lighter conversions um, from solar panels out to cigarette lighters and those types of things go back and watch some of my previous videos I go through full details on all the components that I'm showing here yeah and some people that have watched lots of my videos in the past have probably seen a few of these different solar cookers in past videos that I've done but uh, either way I'll go grab that unit and we'll set it up where I can kind of um, power things up and use electricity and hybrid with this and then I'll show a few scenes of kind of what the temperature is at um, given that these have all kind of sat out for a bit now, we'll kind of show uh, temperature performance as we move through time a bit and then like I say, I'll finish up the video, yeah? So give me two seconds and I'll go grab some gear and I'll come back. Alright, so I just ran into the house to grab this little unit. So this is a DC to DC buck converter they're called. And this is a 240 watt DC to DC converter input of 24 volts it actually takes a range of 18 volts up to about 36 40 volts or so and it outputs 12 volts at 20 amps max now these solar cookers it was like i was saying earlier <coughs> they only use this only consumes about 130 watts or so so it only uses about 10 or 11 amps so this dc buck converter isn't even going to be pressed hard and just so you're aware this entire setup is all waterproof as well it's got just a cigarette lighter adapter plugged into the end and there's a fuse built into it i talk in detail about this in a previous video as well so if you're interested in this component go back and watch that but i've got this solar panel here i just unplugged it from my living room off camera two seconds ago i'm just going to plug in my dc buck converter now <coughs> and i'm going to feed off through the cigarette lighter to the solar cooker and hopefully see if the camera is picking that up okay hopefully the camera can see the light pulsing on the inside if I adjust the uh, solar panel a little bit and uh, can I get it in a good lighting it'll light up full solid other than that it's pulsing heat now into that heat element I showed earlier in the video <coughs> and helping just amp this cooker and like I say, there's a few leaves and stuff that are kind of getting in the way of the solar cooker, or sorry, the solar panel. But right now, like I said, I'm hybriding now where this is producing, um, realistically right now, at this time of day, I'm producing about um, 90 to 100 watts off this panel, which because of the nature of this heater, 
it'll help heat it. It's not running at full power, but it's flexible in that regard. It will help accelerate the, the cooking times in these solar cookers. So let me just see what time it is now. So it's 12 o'clock. I'm just gonna stop and take a break for a couple minutes. I think we started the earliest one at 11.09, if I remember correctly. I got a brain like a sieve when it comes to time, but if I remember correctly, it was about an hour ago. I'm just gonna stop for a few minutes, use the washroom. Obviously do all that off camera, but I'll come back and uh, <coughs> I'll bring my temperature gun out and show you what the temperature is of the units and walk through them to kind of show you of um, how fast the temperatures come up. Like I say, the initial starting temperature of that water was sitting about, I don't know, seven or eight degrees Celsius. So what would that be? Uh, 45, 50 Fahrenheit? I'm ballparking. Like I say, I'm not the most fluent in, you know, flipping back and forth between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. But, uh, but yeah, I'll take a quick break here and I'll come back and start showing you uh, an hour in of what the results are. Yeah. I thought I'd just stop and show you of, uh, you can see that light lights up fully once it kind of gets going through the buck converter it always takes about 30 seconds to a minute or so for it to ramp up but it's now providing full power um, off to the solar cooker at the same time as the solar cooker is just working gathering the sun's energy to make you know heat as well so that should be working really rapidly at this point in time okay so it's 1209 1210 now hopefully the camera is able to see that so it's been about an hour Hopefully the camera was able to pick that up. Like I say, it's been about an hour. I'll pop open the lid now. I've got my temperature gun. I'll show you in Celsius and Fahrenheit now of kind of what the temperature is at. And like I say, you can see, I can hold that with no problems. It feels a little warm on the bottom for sure. But uh, I'll pop it open now and see if I can show you the inside of that. You can definitely see some bubbles starting to form on the outer edge where the uh, um, heat is being produced on the inside layer of the glass and there's a bit of uh, therms coming off it feels warm to the touch and got 50 celsius so 122.9 fahrenheit that seems to be a pretty well consistent theme so as you can see it's at 50 degrees celsius within one hour and uh like I say, this is kind of the small coffee sized unit, if you will. I'll just put that back and angle it a bit better because the sun is rotated now. And uh, in fact, I'm just gonna make that straight south facing. And that way it's gonna optimize for as long as possible. But uh, we'll come back and do another timing. I'll walk through each one of them though, yeah? We'll come back and do another timing and show you where it's at in about an hour and a half or so. So like I say, kind of move on to the Go Sun Go now. I'll just slide out its chamber, and I can tell it's substantially hotter. I can already see a significant amount of bubbles inside that. And that's really a lot to do with how good those mirrors are reflecting. Yeah, I'm already up to 70.9 Celsius, so 159.6, almost 160 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, of see if I can shine it deeper in there. Yeah, sitting about 70 degrees Celsius. So you can see within one hour's time, this thing's definitely hot. That's the only thing I don't like about it is the nature of this container. You gotta really kind of slide it in slowly to make sure you don't spill out too much of the water. But uh, yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of the performance of this. Like I say, this unit's really good, I find for, it's really rapid. If I throw in a few pieces of meat or something in there, it'll cook quite rapidly. I think I showed that in a previous video a couple of years back, but either way, this holds close to two cups worth of water, just under two cups worth of water, as opposed to the first one I showed, which was only one cup worth of water. And you can see just a higher level of performance in the speed in which it comes up to temperature, yeah? So like I say, in an hour and a half or so, we'll come back and check it at that point as well, yes? So now I'll move on to the sun kettle. And generally speaking, I don't find this performs quite as well as the Go Sun Go does for speed, but it is relatively close. And so I'm getting 54.8, 130 Fahrenheit. Yeah, so 55, 56 degrees Celsius. 
you know, and that's 132 degrees Fahrenheit. Like I said, it doesn't perform quite as fast as the Go Sun Go. I really find it is quite a rapid unit in that regard. And of course I spilt a bit because I didn't open it standing up. Normally you would want to stand this up to open it properly and that kind of thing. And like I say, I just kind of tweak the arms because I don't like how the mirror reflects under the surface. It's one of the design flaws here. You know, hopefully I'm on a better camera angle. Let's see. I don't know if the camera's angled much better, but there's a little bit of a design flaw in how the stand sets in. And I like to step it back a bit so that the mirrors stay a little bit more closed than they are. But uh, we'll move on to the large evacuated tube without the extra reflectors and that kind of thing and show you the temperature in that now, yeah? So like I say, I'm just gonna nuzzle in here and pop this open. And once again, there is no heat on the outside edge of the evacuated tube at all. It's, but hopefully you can see that on the camera. See if the camera's picking up those bubbles forming on the metal. So and that's sitting at 52, 53. Now mind you, there's four cups of water in here. So a liter's worth of water that this has come up to temperature um, to the degree it has within not even one hour's time because it took me a bit to walk through each one of these models. And on the inside, see if I can get a slightly higher. Yeah, I'm up to 57 degrees, 57.4 Celsius, which is 135 Fahrenheit. And realistically, that was after closer to about 45 minutes because like I said, I walked through a few of the previous models and the base time of the hour is based off of the earliest one I set up. But these only take a couple minutes to set up, right? But either way, you can see, even with this kind of hokey setup where I'm using, you know, a car windshield reflector, I'm able to get good performance. You know, it, it will come up to the temperature being able to cook food. And like I say, for a tube this size, if I remember correctly, it was about six inches in diameter. And, uh, you know, it's a good couple feet deep, you know, two, two and a half feet deep or so, that um, it'll easily cook for a family of four to six people. And if you wanted to bring, a, you know, a couple liters worth of water up to a boil to purify water, you could do that with this technology, you know, fairly reliably as you move through time. And of, like I say, even without these reflectors, if you fill this up with water and set it out first thing in the morning, by the end of day, normally anything that's sitting in here is going to be pasteurized, unless it's a really terrible day, right? And uh, so now, like I say, I'll move on to the one where we've got the same kind of technology happening, except it's got perfectly parabolic mirrors um, configured on the equipment and it's also plugged into the solar and we'll show you what the temperature is on that yeah and I think I forgot to mention earlier there's this plastic little disc here and there's a little red dot in it and it casts a shadow from the sun shining on it if you will it casts a shadow onto that flat surface inside the dome and when you can see that that little shadow is lined up to dead center that lets you know that you're perfectly aligned to the sun i like i said i know i wanted to kind of mention that of and that way when you're positioning this thing you know if it's a little left or a little right you'll see the shadow of this red dot that sits right here you'll see that um, shadow starts to go kind of off from alignment outside of center let me see if i can even get in as close as I possibly can in that regard. You guys can see what I'm talking. There's that little red dot sits on the top, if you will. Hopefully the camera's getting that. And it casts a shadow on the center of the plate beneath it. And uh, that's how you do the alignment of this thing. So it's relatively elementary when it comes to the alignment of stuff. But uh, I'll shift camera angles, pop this open, and show you what the temperature of the water is in this one as well, yeah? I just wanted to kind of stop and mention that as a side comment. And uh, like I say, the performance of this one really should be by far the best, just given the fact that I'm hooked into the electrical at the same time as this is all optimized and pointing at the sun. So I'll just pop this open and it had the largest amount of volume of water that you can already see steam coming off of it. So I'll just take a temperature reading there. 87.3 degrees Celsius, 189.1 Fahrenheit. And that's maybe in about 40 minutes time. And like I say, there's about four and a half, five cups of water sitting in there. So you can see how quickly that using the combination of the solar thermal with the solar electric can really help amp these things up. Like I said, I've done off two liters of water in this unit with this kind of setup in past videos, I think I've recorded that, where <coughs> I was able to bring two liters of water from like ice cold creek temperature up to a boil in one hour's time. And you can see, that performance is being reached again and i could easily turn around and run this 
in this setup where it's hyper fast i'm able to cook off large amounts of food really quickly for a family of four to six people and uh, use it you know when the sun's up with the uh, solar thermal activated or i can use it um, when the sun's down driving it off battery power and that type of thing and run it well into after the sun's gone down and if i heat this up you know when the sun's up and bring it up to temperature like i say because it's an evacuated tube the stuff sitting in there even if i was to close these doors and shut it all down the stuff sitting in there will stay hot for hours and hours and hours it's uh, this really is the most versatile setup that i know of when it comes to solar cooking um, like i said if an emp happened or something and i lost my electric grid I can still rely on this unit as a very proficient way to uh, to cook food and that type of thing. But if I do have both, you know, I can run off a single 100 ampere hour battery. I can run this unit for, you know, nine hours. If I'm running off like a lithium iron phosphate 12 volt 100 ampere hour battery, I'm going to be able to get nine or so hours worth of cooking time out of this unit. As you can see, the steam's just pouring out of it. In fact, I'll probably end up shutting this one down and then extending the time for the rest of them. But... And I can see bubbles boiling on the inside. Yeah, I'm already at 208 degrees Fahrenheit, so that water's well pasteurized, and 98 degrees Celsius. And I'm right down close to sea level, so I'm going to get about as close to a, this is about as close to 100 C as I'm going to get before it just goes into a you know rapid boil, if you will. So I am going to just kill the power and shut this down at this point in time because there's no sense in boiling water off. But you could see I did off over a liter's worth of water here in what 45 minutes time you know for solar cooker technology it's top shelf and when it comes to that other unit that i had i'll just shift my camera and see if i can when it comes to that other unit i had over here where i was using the the car reflector and stuff like i say that same unit i can plug in a 12 volt cigarette lighter into that as well so i can run both of these units um, off my 12 volt um, systems that I have sitting in the house off grid or the mobile ones I take when I go, you know, um, backcountry and those types of things, and uh, be able to cook for, you know, eight, 10 people at a go and within reason, day or night. So, like I say, I'll kind of stop this main one at this point in time because it's performed, I think, to the degree that we needed to see it of once you reach a boil, you're at the end of the show, if you will. And then I'll switch back down to the ones that are down on that end, the smaller units and the cheaper, simpler units and that type of thing, and uh, show you where they're at. Uh, like I say, at about the an hour and a half point, and if they come to a full boil, we'll start cutting them off, and then we'll take it out to the two-hour mark if we have to, yeah? So given the fact that we brought this up to 98 degrees Celsius, you know, pretty well a boil, if you will, for my purposes. Um, I shut down the doors of it so that it's not going to keep taking in any type of external energy and unplug the uh, cigarette light or adapter and that kind of stuff and just kept it closed because I'm going to show you later on in the video after a bit of time passes, I'm going to show you how well it retains heat. So it's already been about 15, 20 minutes now or so that it's kind of just been sitting, but uh, I'll let you know kind of how long it's been sitting and that kind of thing. Uh, we're getting really close to the point of going back and checking the temperature on the other units. So I'll shift camera angles and we'll start going through that in like two minutes, yeah? Okay, so we're at 1241. And like I said, I think I started this round 10 after 11. So we're at the uh, an hour and a half mark. And I'll just grab this little gadget, pop open the lid. Definitely more bubbles in there. Like I say, these things don't perform quite as fast as the Go Suns do, I don't find, but. 56.9, 134.4. So it's definitely kind of slowed down a bit in its performance in that regard. I'm just gonna put the lid back on it again. But you can see the uh, speed in which it's kind of coming up to temperature is starting to slow down now, which is unfortunate, but it is the way that these just are, if you will. And I think we'll move on to the Go Sun Go now, which I think is at a full boil. So I'll show that as the next scene, yep. Yeah. Okay, so this is the Go Sun Go. I can see water's dripping down the side, so it's definitely reached a full boil. Yeah, and I can hear it vigorously boiling in there. So, kinda take this out and stop it at this point. Oh, ow. And yeah, my gauge shows 98.2 Celsius, so 208.8. So 
I'll see this is completed. Like I say, the uh, gosuns definitely seem to kind of come up to a boil the most quickly, if you will. Of kind of show that if I can get a half decent angle. Hopefully you guys can see the bubbles and stuff that are happening in there. But either way, like I say, we reached a full boil. So I'll just kind of dump that out. And now I'm going to close this up because as I kind of alluded to earlier in the video, you definitely don't want to have it where these units are sitting um, where they're still gathering heat while they're empty. Uh, you just run the risk of having it um, crack the glass and that kind of thing. So I'll just let that sit now in a closed state. Gonna shut that down. But the Gosun's definitely a solid performer in that regard. I've, like I say, I'll just kind of let that all cool down now. But within an hour and a half, the Go Sun Go managed to get the full container of water up to a boil with no issues. And I've seen that in the past where this thing does perform really well. There is a larger version you can get from the same company that is evacuated to pretty well everything you see here, but it's a larger version. I believe they call it the Sport and uh, it's more expensive, but it can handle, um, I think two or three people's worth of food in that regard. So generally speaking, I'm a 230 pound guy. So I would see that as one person's food, but that's me. But we'll move on to the uh, Sun Kettle by um, Ford Patriots, I think it is. And um, we'll look at how it's performed at this point. So, like I say, normally I would turn around and pop this straight up and down before I go opening it. Just so I don't spill any. But kind of pop that lid off. And it's got a pressure valve in there. Kind of helps keep the temperature in. And there's definitely some bubbles that have formed in there. So this looks like it's performed fairly well as well. I'll just take a temperature rating. We got 163.6 Fahrenheit. Oh. Uh, 171 Celsius, 160 Fahrenheit. So like I say, it didn't reach the same level of performance that the um, Go Sun Go does. Um, but it does do off a slightly larger volume of water. I'll just put the lid back on. And I think a lot of that, because the technology is very, very similar, but I think a lot of that is attributed to the slightly smaller mirrors and the mirrors not being ideally positioned in that regard of, it just doesn't seem quite the same level of performance. So I'll just leave that sitting and it can carry on. Like I say, both go suns have kind of shut down because they've reached a boil at this point. And we'll move on to just the evacuated tube with the uh, car reflector, yeah? So, and like I say, with this unit, this is the same evacuated tube that I'm using up in that larger unit that already brought things to a boil. Just to kind of show you the sheer difference of impact that using the electricity in combination with the solar thermal can have. So, I'll just kind of pop this open now. And I can see... Definitely a half decent amount of bubbles in that regard. Up to 77.2 Celsius, 171 Fahrenheit. I'll take another reading just to see. I got 105.4 and 221. That's on the black surface on the inside. So it's definitely getting hot enough where it can bring this up to a boil. It just hasn't quite got there yet, but it won't be much longer now. I'll just try to get a more accurate reading off the water itself. We've got 169.5 Fahrenheit, which is 76.4. So it's getting close to a boil as well. And like I say, this had twice the volume of water that the smaller units had as well. So when it comes to, you know, being able to cook, size definitely matters when it comes to solar cookers these larger capacity evacuated tubes from my lens do a far more efficient job when it comes to being able to cook off enough food or water to be a usable amount if you will like i say i don't mind using the kettle and the uh, go sun go for cooking off when i go camping and those types of things where normally i'll just leave the kettle sitting out for a couple hours of generally speaking i find the kettle normally gets there in about two hours to the point where you know the water's pasteurized and it's hot enough where it's almost at a boil if it's not there already the go sun go normally is about an hour and a half 
you know, an hour, an hour and a half, depending on what I'm cooking in there. And, uh, you know, if meat and other things are in there, it tends to cook far more rapidly than the water. Like I said, I'm using the water in this example because it's really the worst case scenario. It takes the largest volume of energy to bring it up to temperature. So by using water, it really does kind of make the most difficult challenge, if you will. But you could see this is getting close to the point of water pasteurization. I consider anything above about 81 degrees Celsius, 85 degrees Celsius, in around that range, um, to be pretty well pasteurized. Now, I'm sure that there's official stats on those, but normally if it gets above 80 to me Celsius, I consider that to be safe, if you will, and, and useful for consumption. But uh, if I was to be cooking a full meal in this, I'd potentially load it up in the morning, set it up so it was clean, east to west, you know, south facing, but east to west alignment, and just leave it set for the day. Then by the time I came back in the afternoon, everything's just gonna be cooked and ready to go. You can't really overcook in these things as you would in like an oven or something. If you do, it'll just become softer foods, but it's not gonna like burn it or dry it out or any of that. That's just not the nature of this technology. But I'll come back in about another half hour or so and kind of show you where these last couple are sitting and how close they get to a boil, yeah? All right, fellow YouTubers. So we're at the 110 mark, so hopefully the camera got that. I know the lighting's pretty bright today, so. But uh, needless to say, we're at the two hour mark, if you will, yeah? And of, <clears throat> I know that the performance of this, I've seen better performance in the spring and fall out of this unit, to be quite honest. But I think that has to do with the angle it's sitting at than, than anything else. But uh, needless to say, I'll kind of pop open the lid to that now, show you the insides. Hopefully the camera's able to catch that okay. And uh, do a temperature reading of that. So, doesn't still doesn't seem to be performing much better where I'm holding it about uh, 55 degrees or so so that's unfortunate if like I say it's hot enough where I can have myself a hot coffee but then definitely feels hotter than that when I stick my finger in so I don't know if it's just the metals reflectivity that's giving me an issue in that regard but but it's only shown as 52 326 normally I could stick my finger in for an extended period ow but I can't do that. So I'm wondering if it's just, I'm not getting fully accurate readings off the reflection, but either way, at the two hour mark, normally, like I say, when I'm out in the field with something like this, and throw in a bit of instant coffee, if you will, a bit of sugar and coffee whitener and stuff, I'd set that out for about two hours, come back, and I could have myself a coffee on the go, if you will. But uh, yeah, I don't know why it's reading the lower temperatures, because I know from experience that if I can't keep my finger in there for any length of time, it's normally hotter. So I think the reflectivity of the inside of this, um, the materials that are being used aren't um, accurately giving me a temperature reading that I'd be expecting. Let me just see if I can pour it into a different surface. I know it's gonna drop the temperature and kind of ruin the reading, but let me just try that for a second, see if it changes anything. Yeah, it's already calling for, it's already saying it's over 51 degrees Celsius and it would have lost temperature from me being poured in that tray. But either way, generally speaking, I wouldn't be using this to cook food. I'd primarily just be using this to make a hot coffee to give you an idea of, of you know, its uses and performance and that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna set that back in there. I'm gonna call it a thing, you know, when it comes to that one. But as you can see, it's really, this unit isn't that powerful. It's really enough to give you a hot coffee after a couple hours. I wouldn't trust it to cook food. It's just the nature of it. And I have seen better performance out of it where I've gotten it to a full boil in the spring and fall. But I think that's because of the angle of the sun is really high above us at this point in time. So that might be part of what's affecting the numbers. But like I said, I do believe that it was hotter than the 50 degrees or so that it was stating because um, I could barely keep my finger in there. And normally that's a sign to me of Normally that's a sign to me of uh, that it's hotter than 50 degrees, but either way, we'll just move on to the next one. I and mean, like I said, this is only a 20, $25 unit. I have used it to make hot coffees in the past. It does that job, yeah. Okay, so we're back at the sun kettle now. And uh, I'm just gonna set that up so I can kind of check it. Yep. 
The water's already wanting to come out. That's normally a sign that it's close to a boil if there's the pressure and stuff. Then I can see a lot of bubbles inside there. Let's see if I can get the camera in there to get a good angle of things without getting too steamed up. But hopefully you guys can see the bubbles on the side walls and that kind of thing. And uh, I'll just take a temperature reading to try to make it as official as possible. And we're up to 81.2 C, so 178.2 Fahrenheit. So as you can see, I trust this device more to pasteurize water and uh, to make it safe to drink and that kind of thing yeah, when I'm out in the field. And uh, But generally speaking, as it goes with all of these mechanisms, I don't normally do kind of rigid set times when it comes to any of these things. Now, generally speaking, I'll turn around and set these up and come back three or four hours later and just have, you know, the stuff that's in them ready to go. But... Uh, but yeah, that kind of gives you the performance of the solar kettle. And like I say, I have found this one as well in the spring and in the fall. Um, that I, I believe it's a lot to do with the angle of the sun for this time of year. Now, I have had this come up to a full boil though, where it, it has kind of done a roll, rolling boil for me in the past. So, I, you know, maybe maybe the angle of the sun at this specific time of year, because we're right near the uh, summer equinox, if you will, where peak summer where the sun's almost straight above my head but uh either way you could see that it broke over 81 degrees celsius it would have pasteurized any water in there and made it safe to drink and like i say this gives me about two cups so it's you know a good enough large size cup of coffee to, to kind of sustain you as you go I, I really like using this in combination with the uh, go sun go where i'll throw a bit of food in here then throw my coffee to drink in here and uh you know the combination of these is enough to make me a full meal for a 230 pound guy and feel like a, you know i'm sustaining myself if you will in that regard so i'm just going to leave the lid off and let the air kind of come out i've already closed it up so that uh the temperature can drop and those types of things and uh the same with the other ones and like i say you always want to be conscious of you don't want these sitting um you don't want these sitting out in the sun uh, where there's no food in them of you can do damage to your units fairly quickly in that regard if they come up to temperature <laughs> so either way i'll move on now to the uh large evacuated tube and kind of show you that so i can already see some steam coming out through here and i can feel the hot steam coming off it to be quite honest but uh and like i say it's warm to the touch now i wouldn't call it hot but it, it definitely helps retain a lot of the heat right so i'll just kind of pop this open can hear some hissing in that and try to get a reading good and deep in there so i got 92.3 celsius 198 fahrenheit so at the two hour mark you could see the substantial difference that goes on you know just switching up to using the professional grade one if you will the the solar cooker here which i'll kind of go to is the the next scene if you will but you can see the how much of an impact these had relatively the same amount of water the evacuated tubes were you know the same company same design evacuated tubes the only difference was we used the 12 volt with this and we had these reflectors where we could optimize the sun's point with the little focus dot there and you could see there was a substantial improvement in temperature gain in this model as opposed to in this model but like i said it's one of those things where these things you know they're not really designed to be kind of rigid to the second of testing and all that kind of stuff if you will they're normally kind of set it and forget it kind of reality if you will so there's 194.9 come on give me the celsius That seems to have froze there. And 149.9, 90.5 degrees Celsius. So you can see though that um, this one really, just out of not using the electricity and not having the reflectors, slows down the performance of it. But I really am of the approach of, you know, if I was out camping or something, I'd put some food into this in the morning 
you know, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. And then 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'd come along and just find everything cooked. And I'd be off doing things during the day and just kind of leave this sitting on, you know, without, without even adjusting it or, you know, perfectly angling it for the light or any of that business. You know, it's, it's just the nature of how I would use this technology. But you could see, I just wanted to do kind of the comparative between, it's not just simply about the evacuated tube, you know, and, uh, and, and its size. A lot of it has to do with the factors of how optimally your reflectors are reflecting sunlight onto that surface and whether you're taking that 12 volt boost or not. So either way, hopefully this gives you a good example of the solar cooker technologies and using evacuated tubes and that kind of thing. You know, when you're doing solar cooking, generally speaking, it's a long, slow process, you know, when it comes to any type of solar cooker. You know, it's, uh, it's normally one of those kind of It'll create a meal for you in the day. You're not going to normally whip off three or four meals throughout the day. You can when it comes to the parabolic focal cookers, but you have to be there and be involved. And that's one of the things, you know, and they're a fairly large footprint. You can get parabolic cookers that are four or five foot across. Trying to lug something like that into the bush can become an extremely difficult task, if you will, just given the nature of the size of them. Either that or you have to disassemble and reassemble them when you get there and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can see this team coming out here. Whereas these units are far smaller and easily portable. And when you set them up, like I say, you're in the reality where you can set these things up and walk away for hours on end and come back later in the day and know that they've still been performing, even if it's not as optimally as other solar cookers when it comes to, especially with the parabolics, because they focus the light and can create really, really high temperatures. But you have to constantly be adjusting those every 15 minutes or so. You have to be turning them into the sun and those types of things. And there's fire risks and other things that go on with those, whereas none of those exist with the evacuated tubes. And I'm really you know of the mindset of when you're off grid and you're doing kind of um, things in the backcountry if you will it's better to just kind of set something up and walk away and come back hours later than it is to have to sit there and, and finesse with things it's the same with trapping you know you can go off and hunt and spend thousands of calories hunting or you can go off and spend a couple hundred calories setting up some traps and then just go check on them every couple days to make sure it's all good right you know that's the nature of how do you want to kind of deal with your self-reliance moving forward in time but hopefully this gives you a good example of evacuated tubes and their performance and capabilities you know to me they really are kind of the best performers of i know you sit back and say okay well in uh, and realistically this is a little less than two hours time because it took a bit to get the earlier ones ready and those types of things but um but realistically within less than two hours time to bring well over a liter of water pretty well close to a boil even with this primitive setup shows you the kind of power of using the evacuated tubes if i was to try to get that much water to a boil in a conventional solar cooker where it was like a box cooker or something you know it could be three or four hours out before it would even get to this temperature so you know the the speed and and capability of the evacuated tubes can't be kind of um overstated in that regard in comparison to a box cooker and those types of things but if you enjoy this type of content please like share and subscribe and thanks for watching yeah cheers i almost forgot i had mentioned that i kind of sealed this thing up that was about an hour ago now and you can see steam still coming off of it and the temperature is at 84.1 celsius so Got 183.2 Fahrenheit, 184 Celsius. So you can see after an hour's worth of time, that still held a hot temperature of, you know, 84 degrees Celsius. That's fairly substantial. And if there was a larger volume of water that was sitting in this, it would be even slower at responding, you know? Typically speaking, this thing can hold about three liters. I only put in, you know, a little over one liter when it came to the capacity of them. In fact, I'll just let that sit out so it can kind of dry a little bit. But, um, but yeah, hopefully it gives you an idea of the heat retention, that kind of thing.